A new study is looking at nicotine vaping and the long-term effects on your lungs. It's underway at six academic hospital centers across the country. Laura Struick is one of the researchers involved in the Okanagan. She's an associate professor at UBCO's Faculty of Health and Social Development. She specializes in youth health promotion and tobacco control. Tobacco companies have promoted vaping as a safer alternative to smoking cigarettes, but there are questions about their long-term safety. Uh, Laura, first of all, can you tell us a bit more about the study? It's called the Cloud Study. What are you hoping to find out? Yes, that's right. And uh, CLOUD, it stands for the Canadian Lung Outcomes in Users of Vaping Devices Study. And what we're doing is we are looking at um, studying how vaping is impacting the, the lungs from a longitudinal perspective. So what that means is we're looking at it, looking at how vaping is affecting the lungs over the long term. So over several years, so five to be exact with regards to this study. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about how young people are often targeted and what makes them, for example, so susceptible to uh, vaping products. Yeah. Um, so as with any nicotine product, uh, the average age of initiation is very young. It's between 12 and 18. Um, so why is it? Why is this the case? Um, well, when you think about the natural brain development of a young person, um, especially in those teenage years, they are in um, a developmental stage where they have a propensity towards curiosity, towards experimentation, and towards identity development. And so anything that appeals to a youth's curiosity or is presenting them uh, as something that will um, serve as a social coagulator or something that will encourage them to experiment is going to draw them into those products. And the tobacco industry knows this. They have a long history of um, purposefully targeting this brain development within, within adolescence by using uh, things like exciting and delicious flavors and um, very appealing visuals. Some of these vaping devices that are out there are now using um, screens where people can play games on them. Um, and then also using high nicotine concentrations in order to um, give them that high that uh, it makes ultimately makes these uh, devices quite mm. addictive. The study is ongoing, but at, at this point, do we have any indication of some of the health effects that vaping has on people's lungs? Yes, we are hoping to tap into what those long-term effects are. Um, there is some already preliminary evidence within the literature indicating that e-cigarettes are actually not that much less harmful than cigarettes. And we also know that using e-cigarettes and cigarettes together, so that's called dual use, is even more harmful um, than smoking alone. Uh, we also know that nicotine uh, is very detrimental, especially to the developing brain. So our brains are developing up until the age of 25. And when nicotine is, con when the brain is exposed to nicotine before the age of 25, it interferes with the ability to regulate your mood, to make decisions, to be coordinated, to retain memories, all these things that young people need in order to excel at what they love and, and overcome challenges. And so that's uh, very concerning. Laura Struick is one of the researchers with the Cloud Study and an associate professor at UBCO in Kelowna. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thank you.